the ability to just open up the settings menu and change things like MSAA. It's this pipe dream. We are actually starting to feel like it's actually happening. You called the press for a hands-on day, but what you really got was Sherlock Holmes. Hello and welcome back to another Nihongo Gamer video. It's an episode of Water Break and we're checking out the hands-on footage from the Steam Deck. I didn't personally go and get a chance to actually look at this hands-on and in fairness, even if I had a chance, I probably wouldn't have flown out, not in the current climate anyway. And what we did get though, was probably the best person that they could have sent to Valve to get information about the Steam Deck. And it's this video, I'm not gonna play it for you, but I'm just gonna be checking out parts of it. It's this dude, Linus, who you all know well and love. And this video already has like 1.9 million views. I'll link the original video below. But what I would just wanna talk about is my thoughts on this new hands-on footage of the Steam Deck. And what I think is really brilliant about this is that I saw that other outlets also made videos, right? Because this is, I don't know if you sometimes see on the back here, it's like, this was press day for the Steam Deck. And I think they gave each press outlet maybe an hour or so to look at the Steam Deck and find out all that they could about it, you know, how it feels to play. And that's pretty much what other outlets were going to do, right? Is go in pick it up for an hour, get a feel for, do the buttons feel nice? Does it seem to be playing smoothly? Linus, <laughs> Linus did a real Sherlock Holmes. He showed up with all of his adapters and he's just like, you wanna give me, you're only gonna give me an hour? That's plenty of time. Don't worry, that is absolutely sufficient for me to ch do an actual product review. So what's really funny is that, of course, I think he'll probably do a more in-depth review when the product comes out, but we already found out so much information just from this one hands-on look at the console, and I say the console, the, the unit, the Steam Deck. I mean, he's just like, you know, I don't have very long to do this hands-on, but I'm gonna do everything that I would have done with a normal review. So I'm gonna check out the frame rates, he's gonna check out the connectivity, he's gonna check out things like plugging it into a monitor uh, just to see what resolution it comes it, it can output over USB-C and DisplayPort alternative mode. And look at this, he's even brought out his thermal camera and he's checking out all the hotspots on competing products like the Ioneo, but also on the Steam Deck where is it actually getting hot. And it's like, it's, it's just so funny how much it reminded me of an episode of the BBC show, the, the Sherlock Holmes show with Benedict Cumberbatch, because he's like, you th they think if they only give the press outlets one hour that they could only basically get a general feel for, oh wow, it can actually play big Steam games and smoothly. Wow, awesome. And then they're gonna write a nice article about it. That's not how it is anymore these days. You call the press and you get the standard press outlets who for a certain degree, a certain number of them will always give a glowing review because the nicer the review, the more likely they're gonna be called back for other product demonstrations and hands-on. But in this day and age, you get people like Linus who shows up and he's like, I'm gonna test the crap out of this thing. No matter what, I'm just gonna say everything. Though I have to say, it does sound like I, 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 of all the of, the, of the products that Linus does talk about, it seems like he's probably going to be, it, it seems like he's probably being a little more, I don't want to say lenient, but he's more excited about this product. And he, he really wants, you can tell from this video, and I, re I really recommend you all go and check it out, but I'm pretty sure you've all seen it. He really wants to like this. There are points where even it's just like, someone says, are you sure that your, your palms aren't going to be resting on these, these thumb pads here? And like, do you feel like, when you're using the analog stick, it's going to have some in miss inputs because of your palm and or is there palm rejection or something? And I think just I think Linus is concerned about that sort of thing, but the, the, you can tell from his voice that he doesn't want that to be an issue. He's like really hoping that it's not going to be an issue. And I, I really feel like when products come into my channel as well, I definitely feel the same way at the start. I'm kind of like, okay. I know that there might be issues with it, but I don't want there to be issues. But then, you know, usually by, by the end of the video, I'm like, okay, I have to admit, this probably isn't ideal. And it's like, okay, this really needs to be changed if this is going to be a, a popular product. Well, let's just go through this bit by bit. I'm not gonna go through the whole video. I do really recommend you just go and check out the original hands-on. But 
I thought you might be interested to hear my reactions to this hands-on that Linus did. I think the first thing he does was check out like performance on Doom, right? And it sounds like performance was quite reasonable. And this is something I think you'll hear a lot of Steam Deck outlets kind of agree on is that the resolution at 1280 by 800 instead of full HD at 1920 by 1080. I think a lot of people are going to agree that this was the right decision because any if this console spent too much of its time trying to run at 1080p, first of all, that amount of detail, like yes, you can see it on a handle at this at this size. But I think we can all agree that for a large number of games, we're going to prioritize frame rates, good frame pacing, and like steady frame rates as opposed to like just super high fidelity. If we really cared about playing these games at full HD or 4K, we would probably be on our laptops or gaming PCs anyway. And those people are either just not gonna buy a Steam Deck or they're gonna buy a Steam Deck, but the reason they're buying the Steam Deck is to play it portably not because they think this is the place to play these games in high resolution. So, and I think also Nintendo has proven that the running an 800p screen, which let's face it, isn't even running at 800p all the time. It's often running at lower, lower resolutions and, and dynamically scaled resolutions, who knows? So I think Nintendo has proven that for this form factor, yeah, like a, a good resolution is important, but it's not the be all and end all. You can still make a successful product without it. And so I think a large, people are, a large number of people are going to agree that this resolution is actually the right choice because it will show better performance on most of these games. And also, I don't actually know that, I don't know how well 720p or 800p scales to full HD. If this were a full HD screen, but we were playing the games in 720p anyway, I don't know if the pixel, what do you call it, the pixel mapping? I don't know if it would be perfectly scaled as opposed to like, you know, when you run an HD game on a 4K screen, like sometimes that can be perfectly scaled or, or even when you're running uh, retro games, especially when you're running retro games, sometimes you can run them at like five times scaling with perfect pi pixel accurate scaling. Anyway, that's a large discussion to be had another time. He, it's, it seems like he got some pretty good frame rates running at you know a reasonable resolution on Doom. And one of the other things that you immediately see, and you just feel the sense that a generation is changing, is that we got so used to, I, I, you know, portable gaming has been like the the promise. It's like they keep promising that we're going to have console quality gaming on the go. And really, it wasn't until maybe the Vita, and then after that, the Nintendo Switch, that we really felt like we were getting console quality gaming on the go. A large, large, I mean, I can't even name them all right now, but a large number of people tried it. And in the very early days, you know, we had our mobile phone games, but then do you remember the N-Gage? They're just like, yes, it's a mobile phone, but it's got console quality. It's not, I mean, they never said console quality, but they kept putting like console games on it. Like King of, they're trying to run King of Fighters on the N-Gage and stuff. I just feel like this is one of those things that has been a dream for a long time, but it hasn't really been realized. A lot like we still dream about the day that we'll have a, a, an invisible keyboard that we can just type in the air but you know you've seen it in anime you've seen it in movies and you that would be really awesome but it's not going to happen yet just like holograms are not happening though it would be a kind of hologram holograms are not happening yet virtual reality even though virtual reality is starting to happen like that was the dream you know we got the original vr which was like 15 frames per second and it made everybody feel sick and it didn't really work because it didn't actually have i don't know if it had six degrees of freedom it was like three degrees of freedom anyway now we've got a much better version of VR, but in the future we'll have like brain controlled, hopefully brain controlled VR where we can actually feel and smell and sense everything as if it's real life. I feel like with the, I've got one down there, I've got a PS Vita, I've got the Nintendo Switch. I feel like over time the Game Gear, the Game Boy, the Neo Geo Pocket Color, the, you know, the PSPs, the Nintendo DSs, We've just been on this slow, slow rise towards, can we eventually just hold a PC in our hands? And that's what happened maybe three or four years ago when they did the Kickstarters and the Indiegogo campaigns for the these gaming handheld PCs, handheld gaming PCs, like the GPD Win or the Aya Neo, which is one that he was actually comparing here. What I feel 
from this specific screen right here. What I feel is really important right now is that we are actually starting to feel like it's actually happening. Just like when the PS Vita and when the Nintendo Switch f made it feel like, oh wow, PS2, PS3, Wii, uh, Wii U quality games are now available on a handheld, or PS4 quality games are available on a handheld. But this is like what we were actually dreaming about. Like the ability to just open up the settings menu and change things like MSAA or FXAA or mix play around with the gamma and change it so that maybe we can prioritize frame rates or prioritize resolution or turn off motion blur. All these things that the gaming community on the PC gaming side have always really enjoyed. It's this pipe dream that we'd be able to hold it in our hands and have that customizability, have that experience in a handheld so that you can, again, use it on a toilet or use it on a bus or use it while waiting for a bus or use it at your boyfriend's house or use it at your girlfriend's house when you're, you know, you're, you want to go and spend time with them, but, you know, you're going to be there for the whole evening now. So it's like, we don't have to be talking to each other for six hours. We could just like have a quick chat for half an hour and then we can just hang out and watch TV or you could watch TV and I can play games on my Steam Deck and, you know, complete my backlog, which is a complete video, which you can check. I guess I'll link that below as well. I did a whole talk about how I think this is going to be the ideal machine for getting through your Steam backlog. I feel like this specific screen is where I felt like, it's happening, it's happening. We're actually getting the customizability, the freedom of PC gaming culture, but on a handheld. Now it's going to have limitations, of course, and it's always going to lag behind the power of a PC or a gaming laptop, just because it's got thermal constraints, size constraints, it's got the t level of the, like, the power rating you can run these things that we're running at four to 15 watts on the CPU, as opposed to like desktop processors, which are running at much higher power ratings. I just feel like, wow, this is, the, this is the point where I was like, okay, now it's happening. Like you see here, he's often comparing it to other competing devices that have comparable hardware and a comparable form factor. But the main difference is that with the release of Steam Deck, we're also getting Steam OS 3, which is making big promises about being able to run your entire Steam library, but on a Linux-based operating system through their translation layer, which is called Proton. And up until this point, Proton hasn't been 100% compatible, but they're like hoping that when Steam Deck finally releases, they'll have ironed out all the irks and quirks of Proton, and hopefully it'll be working perfectly. But until that point, until Steam OS 3 is available to other developers and other, sorry, other manufacturers, we get these devices like the Aya Neo, which is, I believe, running Windows. And if it doesn't ship with Windows, you'd have to buy it. So this is another thing that makes these devices kind of expensive because when they install it, they've got to install a legitimate copy of Windows or, or they would just send you a device with no OS on it. It's just like, well, that's not going to be very consumer friendly. But that's something that increases the price of it. But with Steam going for Steam OS, they don't need to pay for the Windows license, which is the only other way that you could kind of, well, it's not the only other way, but it's, it's a, the way that you would generally run your Steam games, right? And this is a whole discussion for another time, but Steam OS is like a concerted effort to escape from Windows because even if Windows eventually goes free, like it's, it's at the moment, it's still an, you know, it's this extra cost that people have to pay, especially when they make these devices. But even if it were free, they'd be locked into the Windows ecosystem. But if they can get some momentum here with Steam OS, it one also makes it easier for other manufacturers because they said they were going to make Steam OS 3. I believe they said they were going to make it free for other manufacturers to include on their devices. But it gives them the freedom to make Steam gaming available without relying on Microsoft. All right, moving on. There's a lot of stuff that he talked about here, and, and I don't have time to like comment on all of it. But it was really awesome that he got that thermal camera out, not just to check out which parts of it get hot, but also in a very Sherlock Holmes sort of way, using a thermal camera, but actually to kind of x-ray the device and find out where the components are and what components might be in it. And he even does a very Benedict Cumberbatch style 
acting thing, a, a very Sherlock Holmes thing, where he even like suggests to them that they should change the way that they're cooling de the device, and they're kind of like, yeah, okay, thanks for the advice, we we don't need your advice. But of course, they're probably listening and taking all this advice to heart. But I do really need to get one of these thermal cameras, don't I? I might start zapping all the products that I get for this channel as well, even the ones that don't get hot, just to see what temperature they're at. <laughs> all right, this is where I started to get a little bit nervous. Because for all the reasons I mentioned before, Linus was definitely the right person to send in for this task because he, he got out way more information than I had even been thinking to ask. So even if I had gone, I'd, I wouldn't have asked a lot of these questions about the device. But one thing that I would have checked would be the D-pad. And I haven't as yet, I mean, someone let me know in the comments if you've heard any outlets that have been talking about this. But I personally haven't found anyone who's talking about the D-pad and I haven't personally had hands-on experience with it. So I don't know what this D-pad is going to feel like because I maybe would prefer to just use one of these devices because look how small this is. I can use my Snackbox Micro to play fighting games. I'm a big fan of this layout now. And obviously this is basically the, the same size as Steam Deck. It might even be a little bit smaller than a Steam Deck. This is going to be like a, a perfect companion device for playing my fighting games on the Steam Deck. But a lot of the times I'm just gonna be lazing around on the couch. I'm gonna pick it up and I'm gonna be like, you know what, I wanna play some fighting games and I can't be bothered to get an, a, a point, plug in a separate controller and to put this on a dock and stand it up. I'm just gonna use the D-pad. And this is where I'm a little bit nervous because I am seeing and hearing you know, he's saying like, you know, the D-pad feels pretty good and it's actually fairly clicky. That's nice, but the main thing with D-pads, which tends to be an issue for me, is when a D-pad doesn't have a pivot in the middle. Now, I'm not saying that every controller has to have a pivot in the middle to be perfect, and maybe there are benefits to having a controller that doesn't, but, and this is in a separate video, for example, when I've tested in fighting games, a control a character like Zangief, where you have to roll your thumb in a circular motion, if you do it too quickly and there's no pivot in the middle, you can accidentally activate like opposite cardinal directions, so right and left or up and down at the same time. And when you do that, you end up getting neutral, and that's not what you want to happen in the middle of a, a 360 motion. You're trying to go like right, down right, down, down back, back, back up, up. You're trying to do all of those inputs cleanly in order so that you can play not just new fighting games, but all the old fighting games. Because remember, this is one of the powers of the Steam Deck. You're going to be able to play your retro games. You're going to be able to play just retro games that are already released on Steam. Maybe like if you're interested in emulators, you might be able to play those. It really matters to me how good this D-pad is. And as you can kind of see from the reflection, it definitely looks like there is an indentation on the D-pad. So although I can't see from the video footage here, I can't really see, because he doesn't push directly in the middle of the pad, it's difficult to see whether there's actually a pivot there. And even if there is a pivot, sometimes these D-pads, they can push down in the middle, but it won't actually cause a left and right, you know, opposite cardinal directions to activate at the same time, actuate at the same time. Unfortunately, from the short amount of footage here, I just cannot tell, but that's what I'm really nervous about. And I really, really, really want someone to check this out if they have another hands-on day. I don't know who, I don't know what media outlets are out there who are checking this out, but Steam, if you're listening, this is probably not going to affect you at all because most people don't care about this stuff. But as a fighting gamer, as someone who enjoys Street Fighter, King of Fighters, Guilty Gear, Blaze Blue, that sort of fighting game, it's even with the reduced input difficulty in some of the more recent games, it is still very important that you don't end up being able to press right and left or up and down at the same time on a standard style D-pad because once you push it down in the middle, like you can't activate any more buttons unless you lift your thumb up again and then press down again. It's just like that whole process, just you don't have time to be thinking about that sort of thing when you're playing a controller. So look, it's, it's a long rambling discussion, but Valve, did I say Steam before? Valve, if you're listening, please, please, please put a pivot on this D-pad. It, it can't hurt. I cannot think really of any games that benefit from having a D-pad without a pivot in the middle. So this is my, my personal plea. And if you guys could just like clip this part of the video and post it on Twitter and make sure that Valve sees it, I would appreciate that because <laughs> I really, I really, I, because what worries me is that 
I don't know if this is something that can be changed. I, I, I don't know how well things went for the Steam controller or for the Valve Index controllers, but I'm under the impression that once a manufacturing process has started, it's like quite unlikely they're going to make changes to it, like putting a pivot into the D-pad. I don't know how likely it is that they would do that within the first generation of the unit of the Steam Deck. It might be like, okay, for Steam Deck 2 coming out in 2024 or 2025, maybe then they'd put a pivot in the D-pad. It's like, I don't want to wait until then. I was like, please, Steam, please put a dip, <laughs> a divot, please put a pivot in the D-pad from the start. It would make all the, it makes it would make all the difference. And if you're a tech reviewer and you've been invited to one of these hands-on, please check for me because I'm even if I get invited to a hands-on or something, I'm unlikely to go because in the current climate, I don't want to be traveling. I still feel like getting infected could still be could still be it's still kind of scary for me because I'm based in Japan. I wouldn't be just like driving over to Valve. I would have to be like flying over from Japan. So it'd be uh. in other news. It looks like plugging in a standard USB-C dongle like an old one and still being able to use it and you know get instant access to mouse control. That's awesome. This was definitely one of those points where I felt like, OK, another time that I'm feeling the the change in generation because for example you can't plug a mouse or can you I don't think you can plug a mouse into a Nintendo switch to change the way you navigate the system but for example like on the iPad you couldn't plug a mouse into an iPad until what seven eight I don't know if it was six or seven or eight years after the iPad came out they changed the OS so that okay okay we understand that people are using this instead of buying a laptop you can now plug a mouse into it it's just like that is what happens when you've got a really closed attitude to the way that you're developing your product. But Steam is very much like, look, we love the openness of PC. We're not the only ones who make PCs and we're not going to act like, hey, just because we've got Steam OS on here, now we can act like the whole device. Now we're in control of everything. It feels very much like a PC. It looks like you can plug whatever controller you want in here as long as it's compatible. You can use a dock and plug in a mouse anytime you want. I assume you can also just plug in a keyboard. I'm pretty sure he was using a keyboard later. In fact, just standard things that are built into the USB specification, the one that has DisplayPort, DisplayPort altern alternate mode. They even allowed him to test that on later on here. They were just like, okay, let's plug a let's plug a monitor in here. And look, we've got 4K. What did, did he get 4 say I think he said he got... 4K 60, he got 4K 60 resolution running on this external monitor that he brought along with him. So 4K 60 being output to a separate monitor, I assume that's going to have quite an effect on the performance of games running on the Steam Deck, but hopefully you'll have control over what resolutions you're outputting and what game, what resolution you're playing your games at. Because it sounds like the Steam Deck, this is something that I would like to talk about in the future, but like, what is the potential of using a Steam Deck as a mobile streaming device. So let's say you're going to a local event and you want to stream some fighting games directly from the event before you would have to bring a laptop and a capture device or your, you know, your phone. It's quite difficult to stream from a phone and have a capture device going into a phone still. I think that's still actually quite, quite difficult to get the compatibility for that. What if the Steam Deck, you could bring that to a fighting game event or any video game event, whatever genre it is you play, show up at the event, a competitive local tournament type thing, play the game on the device, but also have on a separate external monitor run the, run something like OBS. In fact, I actually see the OBS icon. What's going on here? Okay, I'm going to have to look this up later because I know so little about Steam OS 3, but this doesn't look like Windows to me and it's got VLC, OBS and Blender? installed on it, so that's cool. All I wanted to say was, if it can in fact run OBS, and it actually looks like the OBS icon to me there, it means that you've got streaming built into this device, so you could show up at some sort of tournament, you could play the game on the device and also on a separate monitor, run a stream and have your Ethernet connection running straight into it. And that just sounds like you could basically run an online tournament from a toilet if you wanted. Sorry that the toilet thing keeps coming back as a, recur a recurring theme, but it's just, that is the freedom of this. It's just, it's basically a gaming laptop, but it's tiny. And when you don't need the keyboard, it's out the way. And so you've just got a screen and controls, and then you can stand it up on some sort of stand and use it to play a tournament and actually plug it into an external monitor. And you can expand 
the ways that you use it. I'm really impressed. I guess one more thing that's kind of cool that I want to point out is this stuff about the gloss. And it, it really is nice the way that Steam has given us tiered payment options. So it's like there's the $400 option that's going to make all the headlines, but unlikely to be for the main main sort of power Steam user. 64 gigs of EMMC is not going to be, it's not going to do it. So you're probably going to want to get the NVMe drive, 256 gigs or the 512 gig drive. But as a, as a result, you pay, what is it? $120 extra. And not only do you, not only do you get double the storage, you also get this really nice anti-glare etched glass screen, which is sounds, it's quite cool actually. Even when it comes to like drawing tablets, I think often like will change absolutely nothing about the tablet. So there's no storage and there's no PC built in, but just by putting etched glass on it, it can cost like a hundred dollars extra or depending on the size of the thing, it could be like three or four hundred dollars extra for the etched glass version. Etched glass, etched glass version. I'm quite impressed about this because you do actually get some really good benefits by paying extra. And I think because of the PC gaming community, I think they're, they're, they're a type of consumer that is more willing to spend money on upgraded parts. So it's like not just more expensive because of one thing that changes, it's like multiple things that actually make it worthwhile paying that extra money. And in a, as a benefit, you're also gonna get that flexible, larger storage. 512, obviously on, on your PC, you can have like a two terabyte drive hooked up to it, but hey, can you run games off a USB-C storage. That's something I also haven't heard answered in any of these hands-on videos. I would be very keen to hear about whether you can do that because then you don't, don't even need to worry about NVMe drives or very fast SD cards. You could probably just run in, I, I assume you could run off a USB-C drive. Why not? Because that's what Steam can do on a PC usually. Like, yes, it would very much change the way that you would use a device like this. You're most likely to just pick it up, not plugged in, play it on battery power and just sit on the couch and play it like this. But you could very easily, like I've got a, I've got an SSD. I don't know if you can see it. I've got an SSD in one of these hard drive enclosures. This, I think the enclosure didn't cost very much money. Obviously an internal SSD is even cheaper than buying an external one. You can just put it in one of those cheap housings and then you could just, I mean, it's super light. You could probably just sellotape it. I mean, the, the, this would be terrible for thermals, but you could s stick it on here in a really ghetto way and have it have, play it like this. And look, it doesn't actually add that much girth and weight to, to a device like this. Hmm. I'm really curious. Some, again, this is one of those things where I would like to see someone who does these hands-on tests. I would like to see someone try that the next time someone goes in to test these devices. Listen, that is pretty much all I have to say for today. I just wanted to give you kind of feedback on how I felt about the recent hands-on footage videos that people were posting. Very happy that Valve is in, you know, inviting people over to check out the unit before it releases in January. I think it's obviously an important part of a product launch, making sure that people get a slow feed of information until the product actually launches so that it is a successful launch. The thing about it is that I don't think that even if they sold twice as many, I don't even think they could make that many more because again, the chip shortage hopefully is getting better, but it's not like, it's, it's still not as, like back to where it was so I know that they want the release to go well, but they're still going to be basically making this at capacity and selling as many of them as they physically can. I'm really excited and really happy about what I've seen. I would say, first of all, that I think Linus did a fantastic job. And given that he was only, I'm pretty sure that he said it was only there for an hour. He answered a lot of questions that everyone had. And he answered questions that nobody, I think, was asking. I'm really, really impressed. I would say... If there are things that I still want answered about the Steam Deck, it is the D-pad. I really, really, really want to know what is the D-pad like because on, you know, for example, if you play on Nintendo Switch, you don't actually get, a, I don't know where my original Joy-Con is, but you don't actually get a standard D-pad. So you always have to buy these extras like this one by Hori. They sent this to me, by the way but you can get these extra add-ons and click them on. You won't be able to do that with the Steam Deck on its own, but of course, if you play it kind of on a table, you can use whatever, I assume you can use whatever controller you like instead. So 
just because I think the primary way of using Steam Deck will be using the built-in controls. It does matter what the quality of those controls are. From what Linus was saying here, it sounds like all the controls feel good on the Steam Deck, but I'm nervous because I don't think Linus is a big fighting gamer specifically. And I think the number of people who, I think, I don't think, I don't think there's anyone who was probably invited to this who is a big fighting gamer. I know at IGN, they did talk about Guilty Gear Strive. They're like, yeah, I was able to use this to play Guilty Gear Strive, but I don't think the person at IGN who tried it, I don't know how into fighting games they are. So I don't know if they would have been testing things like being able to do circular inputs. We want it to have a pivot in the middle, please. This is a solved problem. D-pads don't need to be designed without pivots in the middle. Thank you for coming to my TED talk, goodbye. The other things that I want to know about the Steam Deck are whether you can plug in like a USB-C hard disk for extra storage because, because again, SD cards, it's going to be totally fine to just use SD cards, but a lot of times you might actually have your entire Steam library installed on a USB-C disk, like I do. Actually, I've got just a lot of common game fighting games that I play on, on here, and I don't, don't want them taking up space on my actual computer, so I just have that there. It would be really cool if I could just pull the cable out of here and plug it into my Steam Deck instead and have that entire library as well. But apart from that, I'm just really happy with all the testing that they did and all the answers that we got. And again, I highly recommend you all go and check out the original video. Pretty sure you've all seen it already. Last time I checked, it had like 2 million views. So pretty sure you've already seen the video anyway. But lots of fun stuff to talk about and lots of stuff that I didn't even get to cover in this one, this video here. So again, maybe we'll make another video in the near future and we'll talk about our beloved Steam Deck again. Let me know in the comments, are you excited by what you've seen, specifically in, in this video as well, the Linus video that where he did this hands-on. Anything that you're excited about and also more concerningly, is there anything that you're worried about from what you've seen? You're like, wait a minute, is that the right place for the speaker to be? Or is that the right place for a touch panel? Is there anything that worries you? Let me know in the comments section below. If you like content like this, feel free to subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna be definitely making more videos about Steam Deck in the future as and when new information comes out. I love to talk about the Steam Deck and not just Steam Deck, but I'm, I've just always been passionate about handhelds. Again, like I was saying at the start of the video, I feel like it's just this pipe dream that we've had and we've been dreaming about it for a long time, but it's still not perfect, a bit like how VR, we've been dreaming about it for a long time and it's in one of the best places it's ever been, but it's still not Sword Art Online. We're still dreaming about that. And I think this is the first time that we're finally getting a handheld that runs PC games like PC games and has the freedom of PC games and install whatever you want and change whatever settings you want without, okay, see, this is the big, this is the big difference, without having to go through Windows. That's super exciting. Of course, Running Steam on Windows run, runs perfectly well, but the future of Steam is definitely on Steam OS. I, you know, I think that's their goal to be able to, you know, liberate themselves from Windows entirely. And I'm pretty sure there's a large number of people who run Windows on their PC just because they want to run Steam easily without having to go through Proton. I, I reckon there's a large, large community of people who would happily run Steam OS because all they do is play games on, use their PC for playing games anyway. So if Proton is as good as they're saying, and hopefully if there are games that are going to be running more natively using Steam OS instead of having to go through Proton, like, oh man, the, the future is really exciting for, for gaming PCs and freedom and new OSs, new form factors, and mm, I'm excited. And you should be too. Anyway, if you're not following me on Twitch, follow me on Twitch as well. There's a link below. And on Twitter, you can follow me there. And if you want to hang out with other people who talk about this stuff and are interested in stuff like Steam Deck or fighting games or controllers or whatever, you can join us on the Nihongo Gamer Discord. There's a link to that below as well. That's all for now. I'm, as, I'm excited about Steam Deck as ever. I'm looking forward to talking to you about it in the near future. So until the next Nihongo Gamer video and or stream, I'll see you around. <laughs>